Okay. So um, then at the time, she, uh, while she was really thinking and not sure um, what she was uh, thinking, she, the king saw that she was really confused and king asked her, what are you thinking about? And she said, uh, first she was a bit reluctant, but then she decided to talk to him. So then she started talking to him and she told um, king that this is the grace I have. She said, my desire is that there are clouds in the sky with thunderstorm, rain is sprinkling, there is greenery everywhere on the earth, peacocks are dancing, and I am sitting on white elephant in such a pleasant season. You are sitting behind me with an ornamental umbrella and our procession is moving from the middle of the city. Now, by he, of course, this was not the right season to rain. So, but King being King, of course, he, he comforts her and he says, don't worry, everything is possible. I will do anything for you. And uh, that's how she, he comforted her. And then again, the King started thinking, I have promised her, but I don't know how that is going to be possible. So while the king was thinking, a bit confused, his son walks in, Abhay Kumar, and he asks her, what is the matter, father? And the king is saying what he heard from uh, King Dharini, that this is what she wanted. So he, he, of course, he told everything to Abhay Kumar and Abhay Kumar being, he, he was a very good devotee of this one particular God. So he said, don't worry, I will um, do some uh, tap and I will um, pray to that uh, special God that I am a devotee of and I will make sure that I can do what you need to do. So he started doing this penance and meditation for three days without any food and water. So the next day, after that penance, the next day, it all happened what Queen Dharini, Dharini wanted. It, <clears throat> it started raining and the whole earth was happy with greenery. King Shreni told Dharini, that is this what you wanted? And she was so happy. Now that all that thing happened, the only thing left was her and King try, um, going on um, elephant with King holding that umbrella. And as you can see in the picture, that is all happening. And then next, um, Next, uh, when she finishes her pregnancy, he, as you can see that, um, you know, one of the, <clears throat> uh, uh, one of the servant comes and uh, gives him the, the news that you have given, uh, she has given a birth to the beautiful boy. And by hearing this news, everybody starts, uh, everybody's happy in the town. And also they were all being given some money and some gold coins and everything because today King was very, very happy. Now, as the naming ceremony comes, they decide to give him the name Meg Kumar. Simply the reason is because it was her crave and she wanted to um, wanted the rain and everything to happen. So Meg means rain. And that is how they give the name to a child, Meg Kumar. As he grows, um, he, uh, King decided to send him to Gurukul as the, you know, in those days they used, that was, that was the schooling. And he sends him to this uh, Guru and uh, <clears throat> The, when, uh, when he goes to the guru, the guru says, child, you should obey three rules of the gurukul, which is truth, restraint, and regulation. And uh, he agrees. And then he was, um, he, he grows older uh, and he takes all what guru wanted him to teach. His name, his guru's name was Kalacharya, 
and Kalacharya taught him 72 different types of arts by sutra and meaning and practice with touches all the aspects of life, for example, like physical, mental and intellectual. So he was really, um, uh, for, he, he, he was taught with so many different things. Now, when he comes back from the Gurukul, as you can see in the picture, king and queen gets him married and he gets married to eight different uh, queens. And uh, as he gets married, he starts living a luxurious life. One day when he was standing out in his balcony, he saw the town people were going somewhere and he inquired his servant, what is, where are they all going? So uh, the servant said, they are all going to the, um, at the end of the, like, uh, you know, the same town, they had a big sort of a garden and they are all going there because Lord Mavir has come and he is preaching everybody. So, and as you can see in the picture, Lord Mavir is teaching everyone. And uh, what was Lord Mahavi saying at that time? Lord Mahavi said, blessed ones, one person received a pot filled with nectar due to his good karmas, but that silly person didn't know its importance. One day he entered the house with, um, with, with his feet smeared in mud. Nectar pot was lying in front. He took nectar from it and wasted it in washing mud from the feet. <clears throat> and uh, so Bhagwan Mahavir continues, Bled, blessed ones, nectar, which can free a human being from uh, dangerous disease if used in washing feet, then what will you call it as? Of course, people are going to say it's ignorance, isn't it? Um, so what was the actual message that Lord Mavir was giving? Blessed ones, this human life is even more important and useful than nectar. By spiritual practice, one can be freed from birth, death, and old age disease, and can achieve moksha. If human birth is wasted in excessive enjoyment, comforts, carelessness, then it will be foolish, like washing feet with nectar. So this is what Lord Mavir was saying. So by listening, to Bhagwan's preaching, Lord Mavi's preaching, Meg Kumar got really excited. He thought, oh, I am still young. I have whole life in front of me. I want to use the best of my life. So he decided that, and he went to Lord Mavi saying that I also want to join your son because I want to make the best of my life. As you can see in the picture, Lord Mavi is saying, Yes, you can, but you are still young and you must take the permission of your parents before you can join the son. And uh, Meg Kumar goes to his parents and he's asking for the permission. As you can see tears in mother's eye and of course King is quite confused. He, they, but Meg Kumar is saying, no, I definitely want to join Mahavira Sang and leave all this and uh, the mother and mother said, this is a very, very difficult path. You being prince, I don't know how you will be able to follow. But uh, as he says that just the way like the gold is, has to be heated in the fire to shine. Similarly, the soul must be heated in the fire of penance and restraint to become pure and holy. So, um, I, I, would, I would really like to join and I want to make the best use of my, this human life. And <clears throat> by listening to all this, the parents understand and then they agreed, okay, you can follow his path, you can take Diksha, but before you do that, just for one day, we 
wish that we want to see you crowning as a king and we just want to see that and um, make Kumar agrees he says okay I will uh, fulfill your wish so then as you can see in the picture he's being crowned as a king for one day and um, at the time after crowning him as a king the parents are asking uh, because today you are a king we want we want to present you with something what would you like to do and imagine what he must have said he said he asked for a rajoharan patra and asked them to call for a vanan which is barber to have his hair shaved off so you can see what a great determination for one day he is a king and next day he is going to be a monk but there you are. And then he, <clears throat> he is going back to Lord Mavira saying that I have taken the permission from my um, parents and I'm ready to join you now. So Mavira said, okay, make going ahead on the path of meditation and restraint from today. You will act with awareness, humbleness in every stage of life. Now, he got so excited he said oh great this is what i wanted to do and all day long he was so happy he he went and he saw all the elder months and he was very excited that now i will learn a lot more about the life and uh, that's how he was happy all day as the night falls the as you can see in the picture all the <clears throat> at night while going to sleep all the monks made their beds in a line in a large hole make money was youngest in the order of taking monkhood so his bed as you can see was near the door at the end that was the way to go out and in <clears throat> now why he was sleeping in the night you can look all the other monks and nuns due to the natural cause they had to go in and out and while they were doing that you can see they were all touching him either with their feet or whichever way and he was very very upset there were a couple of reasons firstly he always slept in a like a very soft comfortable bed in, uh, when he was a prince and now suddenly the hard floor that was all that was the reason he couldn't even sleep in the night and then on top of that when all the other monks were going out for a natural cause they all kept on touching him and he was very very upset about it and he was <clears throat> thinking to his head and uh, and uh, he thought oh God, this is very, very difficult. I cannot live like this. Everyone in the palace used to respect me till yesterday and today, so it means the months, and today I have to bear these kicks. I can't tolerate this. I won't be able to follow the hardships of the monk life. I will take Bhagwan, I will ask Bhagwan and go back to my house and in the morning. <clears throat> so with this determination, he goes to Lord Mavir. Now, imagine what Lord Mavir must have uh, uh, said. Lord Mavir already, him being Mavir, he knew what was going to happen. So he, Lord Mavir said, uh, Meg, you didn't sleep whole night. You were in, tr uh, you were troubled with many thoughts, isn't it? And he agreed. So then, Lord Mavi says, please listen, life is like that. One moment we are happy, but sad the next. We seek physical pleasure, but neglect eternal happiness. Pleasure is de derived from the external sources, therefore temporary. As, as, um, as the external sources disappears, we are sad. Our trapped soul gets a constant to luxury comforts and power, and we waste our energy attempting to
to regain the lost uh, pleasure. We lose sight <clears throat> of true happiness. However, um, ha however, the those who learn to take a balanced view and discriminate between pleasure and eternal happiness are not bothered by the uh, vicissitudes of life. They accept both pleasure and pain with equanimity and remain calm. True happiness is with us. So Lord Mahavira was trying to explain him this, but he was still not convinced. So then Lord Mahavir tells him, okay, listen this, listen to this. And then he's telling him there was um, many years ago, there was a huge green forest and in, uh, in the root of the uh, Vaitagiri mountain, and there, there, was, uh, there were many elephants. Out of those many elephants, there was one elephant called Sumeru Prabh, who was the king of all those elephants. Now, one day, as you can see in the picture, the fire broke out, and all the animals started running because they were all scared that they will all burn and die. Now, this king was already old and he was also trying to save his life. So what he does, he tries to run and he sees this um, uh, like a very dry, um, uh, it, like a pond, but, uh, and he, he thought, okay, if I go there, uh, but he, the bank of that was dry lake, and in search of the water, when he goes there, he is re he gets really stuck in there. And when he gets stuck on top of that, one of his enemy comes and hits him with his teeth. And that's how he dies over there. And as you can see in the picture, and then uh, it was very hard for him to come out and the, and all the other uh, elephants didn't even help him because they were all scared of that cunning elephant. And <clears throat> after when he dies, he was again born as an elephant. Uh, and that, uh, that time he, 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 he was again a king and uh, everybody followed him. So again, the fire breaks out and he sort of remembered, oh, I have seen this fire somewhere. And he decided uh, that I must try and do something about this. So he uh, <clears throat> thus he, he he collected his past and he called all the other animals in the forest and they said, look, in the forest, this keeps on happening. So we must do something about it. Let us try and clear some of the part of the forest uh, so that when the, so where there is no trees, nothing. And so when again, the, when the fire breaks out, we can all go in that area to save our life. So everybody, everybody started doing that and they, they sort of cleared the eight miles of area for them if the fire breaks out again to go. Now, exactly that's what happened when uh, again the fire broke out and because they all remember they had cleared that space, they all ran to that place and, <clears throat> and they all ran to that place and uh, they were all just making themselves safe there. Now, again, this uh, elephant, he, Mer Prabhu, uh, he also was there. And uh, when he was there, he suddenly had an itch on his body and one of his feet, he, uh, he, uh, he, he hired one of his feet to, uh, uh, for that itch. And uh, while he did that, there was this very young rabbit came and sat where his feet was and that Mer Prabhu saw that there was a little rabbit. Now I cannot put my feet down, otherwise the rabbit will die. And he doesn't put his feet down. And that's how the rabbit was saved. 
Now, when the fire was finished and everything, everybody started going back in the forest. And this Mayor Prabhu also wanted to go back in the forest. But when he puts his feet down, because he was like that for three long days with one feet up, he couldn't put his feet down. And as soon as he tried to, he fell on the floor and he died there. And that soul of that Mare Prabhu elephant is you. As you can see, you are born to the king. And this is the same uh, soul that was you. So you and um, <clears throat> so uh, there, I, I read this one beautiful book and the book quotes you, uh, he's saying that you are young and only the young are energetic. And so uh, this, this is what it's saying. You, are, Lord Marvira said, you are young and only the young are energetic enough to bring about massive revolutionary changes. But your thinking must change first. Make, instead of dwelling on who kicked you, you should worry, you should be worried if anyone was injured because of you were in their way, you are new here. It will take some time to correct your thinking. A kind soul such as yours deserves a chance in this life to spread that kindness. And the other thing was really nicely written. We fail to understand the difference between physical pleasure and eternal happiness. Do not look for peace and happiness somewhere else. They are within you, no one else, but you can make yourself happy. Now, so then Bhagwan says to him, the, uh, explains to him the flourished virtue of Anukampa within you. Do you want to lose it? Highly rise in your soul. Please do not throw it in vain. So by listening like this to Lord, Mekuma really changes his mind and as you can see in the in the picture, he really is contemplating, he's really thinking, oh my God, is that what you, I was? And he somehow or the other gets that uh, knowledge that yes, I was that and this is what I did. And then he thinks to himself, um, okay, so, um, if I was that much compassionate in that life, why can't I be the same? And then he apologizes to Lord Mavir and he says, please, uh, I, will, uh, I would again like to join, uh, to, I would like to stay in the Sangh and I'm sorry. And I am taking an oath that I will not treat any part of my body except my eyes in my lifetime. I surrender everything at your feet. As you, um, you might think, why just the eyes? But to live a monk life, it is very, very important to have the eyes, uh, sharp eyes, because they have to be careful that they, when they walk and everything. So that's uh, Mekumar is um, accepting the monkhood again, and he's happy, and he realized where was the fault in his thinking. Now, I would just like to um, say a little more about this as this whole story is narrated in one of our Agam, which is the sixth Agam and it, it's Anga Sutra. And this Agam have some beautiful example uh, to explain the philosophy. And this is called Gyata Dharmakatha. Gyata means someone who knows much deeper meaning and dharmakatha means religious stories. So there Sudharva Swami, Swami is telling the stories he heard from Bhagwan Mahavir to Jambu Swami. The story of Meg Kumar is very well described in, in fact, in total 161 slokas. It is the first chapter of this Agam and called uh, the name of the chapter is called Uttikshap Gnati. There are quite a few meaning of it, but some of them I'll share with you. Uttikshap means to raise um, as he raises his leg in his uh, life of elephant. 
Now, second meaning is the uh, means the mind uchak, like you know how we get tensed sometimes. That is uchak mind and agitated mind. And we know from the rough night he his mind got disturbed and he got put up from uh, <clears throat> sanyam bhav. And the third meaning is by raising high uh, and throw away all the karmic rubbish as in the end, make money, surrenders Bhagwan Mahavir. So if any of you get chance, it's very beautifully narrated in our Agam and that's where I read it. Uh, thus, very rightly given the title at the end, the quote from the narrator is also beautiful and uh, revealed through this saga, which is Mahure him, Nia Une him, Vayane him, Choya Yanti Ayariya, Sise Kahinchi Kaliye, Ja Mehamunim Mahaviro, meaning that just the way Bhagwan Mavi stabilized Make Muni in the same way at any one time, if the discipline slips off the path of renun renunciation, then Acharya encourages him to stabilize on the path with the sweet and skillful words, as well as enlightening them with the difference between physical pleasure and eternal happiness. So, um, <clears throat> and there's this one book that I read and that also uh, describes this whole episode very well. And that book is written by Acharya Sri Channaji, and the book is called Walk With Me. And there the book narrates uh, some of these quotes, which are beautiful. Humans, by virtue of their mind and intelligence, can transcend their life and reach the heights of divinity. We fail to understand the difference between physical pleasure and eternal happiness. Do not look for peace and happiness somewhere else. They are within you. <clears throat> no one else, but you can make you yourself happy. Yeah. So <clears throat> the, uh, the lives of heavenly gods and goddesses may be great, because of what they enjoy, but only human life has the potential uh, to reach the liberated soul. Imagine the highest heaven, which is called Sarvartha Siddha Viman, is only 12 yojan, so not much of a difference, away from Siddha Sila. Yet, the God who live there have to come back to the earth to get liberated. So you can imagine how much importance in, uh, is the human life. In the heavenly being and in the hellish being, everything is very extreme. And that's the reason they cannot, um, uh, they cannot achieve moksha. You have to have the right level uh, to think of the moksha. The human birth is your opportunity to free yourself from the painful sansar. Some examples are also given in the commentary on Uttara, uh, in, in fact, in Uttarayadhyan Sutra, the, especially the chapter three, which is very dear to my heart, is called Chaturangiya. And the, the very first slope is so, in, it, it is a very, very important slope. And that slope says, Chattari Paramgani Dullahani Ha Jantuno so what does that mean? <clears throat> it says um, in this world, it is very difficult for living, living beings to embarrass four limbs, which are essential for liberation. Here, Bhagwan Mavir is explaining even after achieving the human birth, there are four rare things to achieve. And the first one is manhood. So not only manhood, but manushyatva, which is a very good word. The uh, birth as a human, uh, human is rare. Um, human, um, but only after transmigrating uh, through innumerable rebirths 
uh, being gets human existence. Now, this uh, is not only the, it's the manushyatva, means so many people can be born, born as a human being, but to have the right mind, manushyatva, that is very rare. So that's what it says. And then the second thing is stuti, listening, listening to the right righteous religion, to be able to listen to the true religion for from a guru is also very rare. We are all lucky that we have some nijis with us and we understand a little bit of dharma as well. So that is also very rare. After listening, faith is again third thing, which is very rare firm belief in or on the said righteous uh, religion is also very important to gain faith in god guru religion uh, in the canon is very rare and the fourth one is vitality in discipline sayam virya sayam parakram as we say that okay we have listened everything we have faith but to um, <clears throat> to practice is also very very difficult so life is like and also Bhagwan Mahavir has said so many things into Kradian Sutra and one of the thing also is very like he has compared the human life to a, a dew drop how the dew drop how long does the dew drop last on the grass that's how the human life is it will just go like that so what Meg Muni did is now that today I have realized I would um, on, only in this life, I would like to renounce and make the most of this life. <clears throat> so here I would like to just uh, finish my talk. And if I have said anything wrong or against the religion, I say Mikchami Dukram. And thank you all for listening to me. Now, please, please feel free if you would like to ask any questions and I will try my best to answer. Thank you. Um, thank you, Inaji. Um, I had a question. Mm -hmm. You mentioned in one of the, uh, the um, summary uh, that Maui gave to Meg, which was that a kind soul like you deserves a chance. Is, mm -hmm. that, mm -hmm. is that a supposition that souls are either kind or not kind and therefore some deserve a chance and others don't? This is a, it, it, you know, the soul as per what I understand, all the souls are pure. The only thing we are all covered it is with our karmic bondages. So yes, it is possible for all the souls to achieve what Lord Mavira achieved. But we have these karmic bondages. And secondly, we have like, you know, I think I am Hina. I forget I am a pure soul. And that is where the difference is that um, it's, it is possible for all the souls to achieve what Lord Mahavira has achieved. It's just um, that awakening needs to be there. Okay. I, I, I just conf got confused by uh, Lord Mahavira saying that a kind soul like you deserves a chance. What you're saying is all souls deserve a chance. Yeah. So why is he saying that? Because uh, how many of us have the guts to go and talk to uh, Samniji? Okay, can you renounce me today? I want to go I, I, from today onwards. I also want to live the life like you are living. As we all know, that is the way to uh, moksh. Do we have that courage? So is it courage or is it kindness? It, it is kindness as well as courage. It's, uh, I mean, you know, uh, I would look at it both ways. And when he goes, that is his courage. And that is why. And also, Lord Mavira knew his past lives. So, As so he knew that he saved that little rabbit. So he also knew that. So I think it is both kind and courage. So 
That's what I would say. So Hinamen, I can be okay. saying this way that uh -huh. uh, it's like Bansi by saying like every soul needs chance. Uh -huh. So it per genism, um, is it my correct understanding that as you said, we have bondage of karma. Uh -huh. And as soon as we realize like in this moment of time and start doing some punya, uh -huh. that is the, the start basically to mm -hmm. break those bond uh, karma. So basically okay. chance means any moment is chance yes. and any time we can uh, start um, attracting punya or like uh, collecting punya means mm -hmm. good karma. Yeah. Is it true? Yes, it is true. And you know, it is not the action. I would stress that very much. It is not the action. It is mm -hmm. your bow. Okay. At times, I like you know. I it's it, there are so many things that we we cannot get around doing it. Although we really want to do it, and those bow can really take you further. As you know, Jainism stresses a lot on bow. So yes, you are lucky if you, if you can do lots of punya karma, which is good. But at the same time, as you can see, some people do punya karma, but with that ego in their mind, with that, you know, that, oh, I've done this, I have, my name has to be there. So again, I think you are wiping off your punya karma by doing that. Yeah. So actually the good punya karma when do you bind good punya karma is when your thoughts are for the uh, uh, to, to to help others yeah and those uh, those thoughts can bind again good punya karma and when those punya karma comes to the fruition then you are automatically going to use that for uh, for the benefit of the others around you or society yeah. Does that answer your question? Yeah, it's so yeah, I agree. Yeah. So basically, um, the bow is the supreme thing. Uh, thing. definitely at any and, one time. And and definitely uh, accents uh, should follow definitely, but the bow should be the supreme, yeah. Uh, definitely. Jainism is all about that. Mm -hmm. It is all about it. Yes. Any other questions? Okay, so I would like to end my talk here and thank you all for listening to me. Uh, Sunil, uh, would you like to Yeah, share? so uh, <laughs> I, I just uh, uh, <clears throat> want to appreciate uh, Hinaji all the time your uh, bow. Uh, as you said, that is a supreme thing and the knowledge you bring, dedication you bring, and on behalf of JB, I really commend, appreciate, and uh, give a lot of sadhuvad that uh, you came um, with the short notice, presented beautiful talk, and uh, uh, enlightened us today. Thank you so much. And Thank I'd you like all to... for listening to me. This is more for me rather than anybody else. <laughs> Thank you, Ina. So humble. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, Maram. Oh, so, I mean, I found it quite oh, engaging and engrossing. You, Ina, oh, You're welcome. Siva <laughs> was saying something, Munsiva. I'm saying that I found it uh, engaging and engrossing, the lecture, which is at a level at which I can understand, so which yes. is good from my perspective. Bansibai, I always try to do that because I know yeah. definitely we'll be there. And uh, yeah, sorry about the little bit of technical uh, difficulties to begin with, but I got around to it at the end. <laughs> Thank you very much, Bobby. You Thank you. Uh, done a wonderful lecture, and we all appreciate. Uh, I mean, Bobby is very closely associated with JVB, so she's always there for us. Thank you. Yeah, and as uh, so uh, you said, the more than closeness, the bow. <laughs> and wow. you know, I, I met her, I think,
think uh, 2005, in last 16 years, I never had any doubt. It means my bhav became better and better about Hinaji's, uh, uh, the karuna, daya, whatever you say, like helping nature. And all the time she's in uh, Jain Darshan as well, doing good thing. I can go on and on. So nice of you, uh, Hinaji, that you are a test with us. <laughs> <laughs> Let's say everybody says Om Aram to Inavabi. Thank you. Om Aram. Om Aram. Om Aram. Om Aram. Om Aram. Om Aram. Om Aram.